I actually would like to uh, start with you, uh, Sami and Omar and Kinan, about uh, what we start speaking of the question that you also probably leave open in your uh, performance regarding the chance, the chance uh, in opposition to a well-planned project like the network, a chance that brought books to be there. In a way, it also opens a different um, possibility of looking at a network of writing. How, how do you relate to that? Why this was an important um, they say juxtaposition, juxtaposition, sorry, a, a meeting, let's say, <laughs> juxtaposition between the, the chance and the well-planned. And what can this open up for us as, uh, as people who move, but also sometimes there are so many chances around us that also can formulate our movement, our thinking, maybe also our practices. Uh, the chance that you mean in which sense? This, uh, uh, the chance of the books being there, yeah. because it's not really clear. Are yeah. these uh, printers really arrived with a train? Mm -hmm. uh, are the books, are, um, let's say, the, the grandchildren of these uh, printers that mm -hmm. they arrived with the, with the German uh, makers? Uh, and because there's a gap as well. Mm -hmm. There's a gap between the working the station and when actually these, uh, this market appeared. Mm -hmm. I think it's like, uh, I mean, if you, if you want to talk about a chance, it's like maybe you could consider that a chance that maybe because of our ex different experiences with books and with the station as a building, as a, as a, as a construct there, um, that makes like it, when we see the, when we saw, when we knew about this book uh, shop or this in book exhibition inside, inside, and through our interest with book, actually we connect this together. But actually, if we want to to put it like in a general context, because we are researching this kind of um, movement of appearance and disappearance of books, of libraries, um, and uh, especially the publishing archive. And if we want to put it in the context of the train, it has this, it has, we also considered that building or the train that passed there, it was also in this kind of statue of appearance and disappearance of, as a station because it, it has this two function, it works and it doesn't work. It, it, ha it has this image and this name of a station that exists um, of maybe um, a, mem a memory, a public memory of certain people that, that are there, but in the same time, it, it, it disappeared through, through the time and through the non-functionality of this station. But in the same time, um, when, we, when we talk to the, the publishers and uh, to print, pr like pr all the sh uh, sidewalks booksellers, they don't want to have any relation to the station. But in the same time, uh, we, as, as, as we consider this kind of movement that happened to the books, in this area and to the, the appearance and disappearance of this uh, book, for, for instance, the sidewalk booksellers from this area, it's, it's, it, it's open up somehow a chance of a relation with the train, if that's what you, what you mean. In, in, uh, yeah, and also in a sense, so I'm going back while thinking about the issue of the linear and the non-linear, because mm -hmm. really the, the railway is a linear, uh, and maybe sometimes the structure of language forces this linearity as opposed to the visuals where you can put two images together and, and put a narrative as you did between uh, Iraq uh, and, and uh, Germany, uh, which is harder for um, maybe literature. But in that way, is the chance as opposed to the network of the linearity opening a new narrative for us for understanding maybe uh, literary practices or visual practices uh, in that sense. And I'm also maybe um, relating this question where the network also goes beyond the planned network. We're talking about uh, uh, the Eastern Mediterranean and suddenly we have the Southern Mediterranean also part of, of this network. Uh, and I feel that this chance is somehow uh, opens a, a parallel narrative to the narrative which is structured normally. And I don't know what you also would say about that in terms of uh, visual practices, because it, I think it's more difficult with, with the literature, if you also can comment, uh, Murad, on this. Is it by chance that suddenly we have Moroccans thinking this way or connecting beyond the network uh, that exists in reality? Mm. 
Well, you know, I think uh, there's certainly something to do with, uh, with, with, the, with the famous idea of microhistory uh, and a history in motion. So everything that's useful in order to debunk a linear history or a history that runs after a point of origin or a point of arrival should be productive. And it happens that through the railways or through this uh, trade system uh, of uh, Moroccan, Lebanese, Egyptian, Palestinian craftsmen, uh, something probably much more important than the craft itself happened. So I was trying to understand how can we talk and how can we shape with words and image uh, that, uh, that, that something that goes beyond the product that's been produced or sold or transferred or transported. Uh, between all these cities, for example, with the, the Tarazi family or the relationship between modernist architecture and archaeology in Iraq. Um, and you, you basically need some imagination. You couldn't do it in a positivist or basically historiographic uh, fashion. So, Yeah, I mean, also this idea of the imagination, which is very strong, it also plays and connects you know, along the network, the imagination, and probably we can see it with the play of Fayrouz, al Mahatta, which is, uh, or the station, which is a pure act of, of uh, imagination, but becomes like a part of reality, and maybe a reality, but it's the reality within this imagined as well uh, text. So c can we, in that uh, sense, relate to imagination as a, as a microhistory? Can we deal with that? As a, as a, a, even a trace for history, where we can construct a history. Mm -hmm. Because there is, in reality, there is no real relation between the printing and the presence of these books and the circulation mm -hmm. and, the, and the network, or in the, in the case of the visual practices in these regions, they don't really relate to a real network. Mm -hmm. uh, so are they leaving us? Are they uh, taking us somewhere else that maybe is not real and doesn't rely on the real and, and, and how they also relate to the real in that sense as well. Actually, I think it's part of reality in a sense, but maybe, uh, as you say, the parallel or a sub-reality or an unconscious reality in ways that the system of goods exists, the system of transportation exists, Obviously, the fact that a, a railway system is known as incomplete opens a door for imagining what it could have been it, it, if, it has been, if it was completed, for example. Uh, but still, the, the goods exist, the transportation exists. It's the, the, the interrelations and the sort of new uh, parallels that the, the good generates that maybe is not known to a, to a positivist approach. Uh, because in microhistory, it could be a piece of uh, something you eat, a piece of cheese, or a bottle of water, or anything that's not important itself as an object, but important as a generator of actions, of relations, as a, as a sort of non-human agency. So for example, I'm taking the idea of ornament in Arab artist uh, abstract paintings, and I'm trying to deal with the ornament not in an ornamental way, not a, in a compositional way, but I'm trying to use the ornament in order to uh, retrace relationships, uh, dialogues, uh, interrupted uh, trajectories maybe, uh, because the ornament itself is a way, is a mode of mobility. The ornament itself is about circulation, is about... So choose objects or find non-human agencies that will provide with a certain potential for mobility, for connectivity, etc. Yeah, um, and Mohamed, in that sense, um, because you try to connect these parallels in a, somehow to our uh, present to uh, the, the new networks that are being created, but maybe in a way they are also uh, a function of the imagination that uh, 
maybe we can connect the, the, them not really only to the railway, but maybe the railway is a, is a function of a certain mode of thinking that is now disappearing, that we can see now we are living the effects of these um, connections, that we already explored the, the linear aspect, but we are living beyond that now that they had their own lives, and we can see that the railway is not working anymore, but there's other workings of the, the, the yeah, work the of the railway. Yes, other networks which are working and other mode, modes of thinking are working. For example, Kati, you talked about the language as a sort of, you know, as the railway. Yeah, for example, if you take uh, Turkic languages and Germans will understand them really well because it's subject, object, verb. It's a sort of given, you know. You have to put verb at the very end. And until you set the verb, you don't understand, is it question, is it future tense, is it... So there is the totality of the uh, sentence, yeah, which is restricting thing in a way. But at the same time, what the history of uh, Turkic, let's say, poetry, yeah, uh, shows, or Uzbek poetry shows, uh, it starts to develop when it, uh, uh, when it meets with otherness. For example, uh, the, the, uh, the Navai uh, poetry, which I quoted, for example, uh, was the uh, result of meeting the Persian poetry, yeah? Uh, result of Turkic versus uh, Arabic and Persian poetry. Uh, there was a development during the 20, beginning of the 20th century, poets like Cholpan, like uh, Fitrat, the meeting with the completely different with the Russian tradition and so on and so forth. Nowadays, for example, there are people who are, uh, uh, who are sort of experimenting uh, because they are meeting on these virtual networks with the world poetry, let's say. So there is always this development when there is a clash. And, and now we are maybe talking about with the disappearance of these uh, networks on the ground and, and the replacement of, uh, of maybe networks that they go beyond the place and, uh, and maybe even sometimes relation between books as, as ideas. So are we also in a different, uh, maybe, literary form? I think so, because, I mean, now we haven't got an attention span more than a tweet, for example. You know? <laughs> so the novel, now, could, I mean, to read a novel like Strangers of My Mind, you have to be devoted to it, you know, to read. A normal reader is not reading anymore the big books or the Joyce uh, Finnegan's Wake or whatever. It's just crazy people who are reading it. <laughs> Though I, we would find also like very crazy writers who continue to yes, write 1,500 yeah. pages yes, now. <laughs> yes. I think something is happening with the sort of, you know, with our mode of thinking, with our way of thinking. It's shrinking, it's shrinking, it, it's becoming sort of, you know, more Twittery, more Facebooky in a way. <laughs> but if we talk about it also in terms of, uh, of um, multiple uh, places existing at the same time, because also maybe we see that uh, uh, the project of the, the railway network was to consolidate a narrative, the narrative of an empire, and especially the Hejaz railway, which passes uh, uh, through uh, these lines. And maybe also I'm thinking of, of um, the, the novel as such that also was parallel to, uh, to the network. So it's, if it's not in terms of the length, but in terms of the structure itself, could it, for instance, there was a moment that we can, um, uh, because you started your talk with a writer that you never went back to him uh, and you went to the visual, but where is that? Is there a moment that the, maybe the, the literary and the visual, they can cross with each other, uh, that we will have a new novel and, and even a new uh, type of imagination that is an outcome of real networks. What would happen, for instance, now, if we look also in the, um, on the, um, what they call the MENA, or which a uh, term that I find problematic, but we can replace it with the Southern and, mm. and Eastern Mediterranean, what are these links now? How they exist? We, uh, can, we can even replace Middle East with uh, West Asia. This is also <laughs> an option. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, I think it's already happened. We haven't noticed, but it's already happened. I mean, writers are not the sort of, you know, now the... Uh, 
you know, the upholders of the wisdom or whatever, you know, they are not prophets of the world, you know. Uh, now the television personalities are the, uh, the upholders of the world, you know. Uh, writers are obscure people now, generally, generally. It's not uh, my complaint or whatever. Uh, what I'm saying is a reality, uh, is a reality. For example, uh, the, take the list of 100 uh, most influential people, yeah? Whoever is there, not a single writer, for example, for example. <laughs> Yeah, so writers lost their plot already, you know, sort of, you know, the uh, novelist as a uh, thinker, as a person who moves the, you know, the, the, the thinking of the world. It's, it's already lost. It's already lost. We can argue on this at length, yeah, but yeah. maybe. What do you think about this? Because it's also your practice is based on something that uh, Hamid is, is disappearing, claiming is disappearing, and maybe you're also investigating this disappearance. Mm -hmm. So what would... Is there true disappearance of the, of the novel and the appearance of the visual mm -hmm. or, or the no attention to the language? Uh, Actually, we, we consider disappearance and reappearance in com completely different contexts, not just like it's not the disappearance it's, uh, of the disappearance of writing or reading, but in the sense of that the publication itself, it had this capacity of a uh, through of course, a human crisis, and of course, through, through different circumstances, that the, the archive of publication is actually appears and disappears <coughs> disappear from a certain area to, de to de reappear as a reality in a different area. For instance, if you took it on the ground in uh, the Lebanese Civil War and, but, uh, and then um, in, the, in the Iraqi invasion, like the American invasion in Iraq, 2003, and Syria, you can, if you look to the f very close, closely <coughs> to the um, sidewalk booksellers and the, ar the, the archive, it, it was, it's moving actually, it was moving since the 70s in these areas, if you consider it also as a train of movement, as a movement, and then the, um, uh, like strangely enough, some books landed in a, in a station like the, the Hijaz train station, which is like two worlds that really doesn't really fit together, the reason why the station built and why the books later on came to this place, so actually, Kind of, if I want to claim that these books also, um, they are appropriate the space of the station to create another reality to, and even for instance, the whole publishing publishers and uh, booksellers around the area. I mean, maybe this area was developed because of the train, but in the end, the train was started to be an illusion and, re and, and something that unfunctional. But the 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 area started to became this place for readers for books. And maybe in the end, to say the books uh, actually um, appropriate or they div uh, invade the, the station itself. Yeah. And they have their own life they and their, their own, own connections life, exactly. as well, and, networks, and, they yeah. and to, dis to, to go, for instance, like when I go to Damascus in 2017, they disappeared. They weren't there. And no one knows where, where are they. Maybe I was, it was like kind of something that you feel like, is it a, rea is it a reality? Why? Because I go there and it's, I, I don't see any, pic any, any books but Keenan was there before and he saw the book. So it's like, it's kind of something that for us also has something mysterious that this movement that books also um, bring with, yeah. Shall we open to the public? Anybody has a question or? And even the train, for, for many, if you don't look to the history of the train, for many people, for, um, for us also, it feels like a, a mysterious story because you know, you see the, the station that you never, know that if they're a train passed by. So it's like always it's an imagination that, that, that we relate to. It, it was connected also, like this idea <coughs> is uh, the film from Rania from yesterday, like a uh, lot of people that talk about the, the train, but uh, nobody uh, connected, uh, was connected with the train. And it's the same for us with the uh, Hijaz station. I would like also maybe to refer to um, what uh, Yazid presented in, in his talk from the memoir of uh, uh, Khalil uh, Sakakini uh, about this trip mm -hmm. that also now we, we only learn through, uh, about through books mm -hmm. uh, and this kind of stopping of movement. And I, I mean, we live in a reality now of uh, disintegrated landscapes, uh, these networks we're talking about, the trip that you describe your great-grandfather uh, took, uh, they are impossible at the moment. 
there's not even the, and you're talking about that the station that doesn't work anymore. This is not uh, a technical dysfunctioning, but it's uh, probably also a reasoning we have uh, a train in Damascus, where would it go? How far? It's also with uh, a travel. Uh, the novel you wrote or be, have been inspired by uh, the railway or the connections you think uh, of, uh, as if we are living now and reflecting on them um, from previous practices. What this, this um, Disintegration now. Is it going to be replaced by the networks that uh, Hamid is mentioning? If you can comment on that. Also, how will it affect um, our imagination, our literary practices, our visual practices as well? If you can comment on that. Uh, well, or what it inspires to me is that probably it disintegrates into algorithm. But at the same time, probably if you think in reverse, you have some scholars like uh, Laura Marx, for example, who demonstrated that algorithms, algorithms existed in uh, Iraqi science of uh, geometry, numbers, etc. So probably the algorithm is just a repetition of other modes of thinking that maybe didn't have uh, the... The, the sort of uh, economic growth behind it as we have today, but uh, I think science basically recycles into into something else or um, as mu mutations of uh, again as for my case, for example, geometry with ornamental compositions actually allow you for thinking what was to become today the algorithm, for example, I think. Uh, so to me it's about trying to I mean it's each invention that comes new uh, will probably erase the apparel or the device that existed before it and at the same time the thing that has become obsolete will find a new function because of its obsolescence or because of its um, outdated or out-fashioned uh, condition. <laughs> it, will, it will find another function. It will find another raison d'être um, and obviously become an anachronistic. Eventually, yeah. yeah. And, and materialization. Uh, what do you think in terms of the book itself and also in, in relation to the stopping of circulation of ideas that we're talking about uh, books? We see that you get the book from... Uh, Cairo, of uh, building the underground in Cairo, and uh, the uh, uh, book Before about, uh, yeah, uh, Ujjur yeah. Rizidan, yeah. and the book of, uh, of the railway in Bilad al -Sham. Mm -hmm. uh, Now, in the present, uh, even such circulation of books is, is very difficult in the Arab yeah. world, if you can comment on that, and how is this materializing? also in terms of the imagination uh, and in terms of exchange of ideas and creation of a discourse uh, that feed into a new mode of being, let's say, in parallel to the idea of the pan-Arab uh, or the pan-Islamic that was coming to um, uh, the Ottoman Empire and then later came in the 50s and uh, of the, the pan-Arab uh, connected world or in the Soviet Union of a whole connected world. Now we are being cut, ideas are interrupted, books are not circulating, and maybe in the, in the reality of, uh, of, of uh, uh, the Arab region, it's more severe. It's not a disintegration of states, but there is a, a violent act of this disintegration. And probably when you talk about the books that they are not there, uh, the book fair disappeared, uh, we can also understand maybe this is an effect <laughs> of the Syrian revolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, actually it's like um, actually it's like um, well, it's like a, the sudden and a chance. It's like a, is it a mix between two things? Like something that happens suddenly. Like it's how you reach mater material um, in the same time that this material doesn't give you the the, the whole power to, uh, to 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 control it completely. For instance. Those books that we are f that we found you know, on the way to to the station or around the station, there are things. There's, there are materials that, of course, you can you could say they would dis disappear once, or they disappeared, or it's difficult to get. But in the same time, I mean, um, the thing that we we are seeing that 
there is a possibility that 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 exists, um, or there is somehow a chance that the published publication itself has that makes it kind of circulate, circulating around in these in these different areas of of if if that with with this with a with a suitcase or with a train or with a bus. But you 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 are you are get you can always find a chance to to re, to to get these. Um, Materials that maybe, yeah, uh, op I mean, because because it's if it's fun the function of these materials become different for us, for instance, because this, the function of these materials become um, kind of, um, I mean, if you if you are talking about the imagination and about how opening ideas that come through, because these material maybe it's it has a kind of ability of giving us kind of um, a continuity of the history, so it's and maybe it's. It's misunderstanding the history. It could be also la making a, the history uh, like um, foggy. So it's it's a way that you can use it in in different way. For instance, for us in Fehras, we are using these material as a um, as a way to talk about today. So so the if, so the function of these material, we we we, ha we we use it in a different way. So we understand it in a different way. Okay. Yeah. And would you like to say something? Yeah, about the I mean. Uh, it's a sort of, you know, it's a fundamental human need, isn't it? Like, uh, not just to live here and now, but in a big time as well. So in that sense, the, I mean, the future of the books or future is uh, uh, sort of, of writership is guaranteed, you know? So people will be trying to sort of quest for the future and so on and so forth. On the first ground of this floor, uh, of this uh, house, there is now the exhibition about Russian cosmism, you know? You try to extend your inner world way beyond of yourself, you know? It's a natural uh, human condition, isn't it? Uh, so the railway is, in a way, uh, externalizing our inner uh, thoughts, inner feelings, and so on and so forth, into the uh, outer world, in a way. So in that sense, so the future is, is quite... <laughs> Uh, wildly probable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. So we, we finish with this note.